Hello, bonjour from Toronto. Where else would I be during this global pandemic, but here at home on my balcony, listening to the birds and the wind, my cat, and uh, whenever I can, having tea and conversation with creatives around the world. I spoke a few weeks ago now with Mihalina Malish of the Swiss folk metal band Elevati. She lives in Poland, and I really haven't heard much about how life under COVID-19 quarantine has been in Poland, so I wanted to talk to her about that, but also about her music. Mihalina plays the hurdy-gurdy, which is a stringed instrument from medieval times. You don't hear it a lot in popular rock and roll, some folk metal bands, but not a lot. Uh, and she has this YouTube channel where she does classic metal songs and metal riffs like Black Sabbath and Iron Maiden on the hurdy-gurdy. It's really fun. And frankly, some days uh, you just need a small break from the news and, and a little bit of fun. So I hope you will enjoy uh, this conversation with Mihalina Malish. Thank you for joining me from Poland for some tea and conversation. Welcome to yes. my room. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> so, you know, in this quarantine time, I've watched a lot of, you know, viral videos, people doing funny dances and, and such things. And then I discovered your uh, Iron Maiden on the Hurdy Gurdy video. I am one of one million people who have yeah. seen this video. So I wanted to talk to you about that and also what life is like in Poland right now, because we really, you know, here in North America, don't hear so much um, mm -hmm. about what's going on in that country. So um, tell me a little bit about where you are, what city and where you are sheltering and, and what your daily life, daily life is like. I live in Krakow in Poland and it's the second biggest city in poland so it's um it's, it's quite big and i live with my husband together in an apartment and um yeah we are just staying in in the city during the, the quarantine and, and everything and we also have a workshop and we are building hurdy gurdies in this workshop so my husband is working in the workshop and we we have this company together so this is more or less how we spend the quarantine he's working with his his employees in the workshop so we had to just um introduce all the safety measures and all the necessary things to keep going um and i am just working from home it's kind of like my office because I do social media for for our company and I do customer service, so I just basically uh, do this kind of office job, and I can do this from home, so it's not a problem for me. And I also like to stay home, so <laughs> it's I, I I just like to be home, so it's kind of nice for me, I would say. Before we go to my next question, I realize I forgot to ask you about what tea you are drinking and, and the mug. You have an interesting mug. Yeah, this mug is, um, I think it's like a hand painted, uh, I think, yeah. I think it's like handmade and I'm drinking white tea. I really like white tea, especially in the morning, but also in the afternoon, right now it's afternoon and it, it's quite strong, I would say, just like, in, I drink it instead of coffee. Because I don't drink coffee since I think like ten months. <laughs> I, I don't think I have any white tea. What is that? Um, white tea is um, it's like before the green tea becomes green tea, it's white tea kind of. I think it 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 works like this. You just pick the the leaves and then you um, you know you do something I, I think you dry them out and do something else so they become the green tea <laughs> I don't know. I'm, gonna that. That. I'm gonna research that i don't know that story um yeah, i'm yeah. very simple today because 
you know, we're doing this uh, in different time zones. It's early morning mm -hmm. for me before work. And um, I'm just drinking English breakfast. Um, oh, you're good. And the English people will be mortified that I drink my tea very weak with nothing in it. <laughs> um, so, very easy. It's, it's however you like it, it's your tea. <laughs> How is your creative brain working right now? How are you affected by um, the corona pandemic where you live? I don't know how scary it is in Poland, how many cases you had or how much severe the lockdown was. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even if you like to be at home and you have a husband and a business, it's not a normal time. So, you know, how have you been dealing with it where you are? Uh, well, in Poland currently, um, the lockdown was lifted a little bit and we had the obligation to wear face masks uh, whenever we go outside and this has been lifted now um, so you can go outside without the mask but when you go inside somewhere like a store or just i don't know or maybe uh, on a bus stop then or or like maybe not bus stop because it's still outside but like a tram or a bus or just public transport then you have to wear the mask uh, but it's easier now since we don't have to, to wear the mask while, I don't know, riding a bike or just jogging around. So this is, this was a big step forward for us. Uh, the restaurants are open. Uh, they have a gas limit, uh, each and every one, but um, otherwise you can just normally go to a restaurant and just eat there. You don't have to do takeaway. Um yeah, I think have, have you gone? Do you feel safe going to restaurants? We don't have this here yet. So mm -hmm. uh I've been uh once in a restaurant so far and it was completely empty. So <laughs> that was that I felt safe in there because there was nobody there. Um I don't know if there would if somebody else would be inside. I I, mean, I don't know. Uh, but in the end, officially, we didn't have as much cases as, for example, Germany or Italy or Sweden. So this is probably why it's not so loud about Poland right now, outside of Europe. You said that you like staying home and you have this business with your husband, but you're also a touring musician. Yeah. And um, you go on the road with uh, Elviti? Elviti? Elviti, yeah. Elviti, um, which is a... Did you call this a folk metal band? Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. Um, from Switzerland. So were you in the middle of a tour? Was something get canceled? Did you have to come home? Like, I know you're supposed to come to North America in the fall. How is the touring life being um, readjusted? At the beginning of this year, we had a little bit of a break. Um, we had uh, January, February, and March free. So totally no shows nothing going on no rehearsals nothing and then we were supposed to go on tour in april to russia and uh this obviously didn't happen because um <clears throat> at the beginning of march we still thought that it's, it's possible for us to go to russia because they um they didn't have uh, too many cases of covid and the promoters i think uh we wanted this tour to happen so we were still negotiating and we were just looking how the situation develops. But in the end, of course, we had to cancel the tour. But that was not a question. And when we knew that uh, all the borders are probably closed at the time that we have to go to Russia and it, it was just not possible. Uh, so we were supposed to go on this tour and then we, we were playing some other festivals in summer. And then uh, in September, I think, uh, we were supposed to have the North American tour again. And this will also not happen. So we actually have a full year off. And what we will do in the future, I think we will just try to arrange the 2021 uh, as if it was according to the 2020 plan. So we will just try to 
we we do there <laughs> how it was supposed to be and for now um uh, i'm pretty sure that we will not play anything until the end of the year so for those people who don't know um what is a hurdy gurdy hurdy gurdy is a um medieval early medieval instrument i mean it's it was kind of, i don't know developed in early um, mid middle age middle age yeah okay so around 10th 11th uh, century and it is a instrument that works kind of like a me mechanical violin because you have strings and you have the wheel and uh, you have a crunch that you can turn the wheel with and it grabs the strings on the wheel and to play it you use a keyboard so it it's maybe more precisely uh, described as violin combined with a piano <laughs> or something like this and it was used in first in um like court music i think and then it started it was all over the place uh, it, it began uh, as an instrument used in church, and then it was, yeah, it has a really complicated story of like going from one level of society to another, like first uh, it was the instrument of beggars, and then, yeah, it's, it's really, yes. Yeah. So if it was around in the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. and you could hear it in church, um, there were people playing the hurdy gurdy in the last plague, also. Probably, probably yes, because it, uh, yeah, it comes from from around 10th, 11th century. So I think so, and it, yeah, most probably. I can imagine this happening. <laughs> Maybe not Iron Maiden, though. They wouldn't know that. Maybe, no, <laughs> um, I don't think so. So tell me about this project you have. You have a YouTube channel where you do heavy metal covers on the Hurdy Gurdy and you do riffs, uh, Black Sabbath, Gojira, and this Iron Maiden video, which now uh, is very popular. Why did you decide when you got um, locked down uh, to start this project uh, of doing videos for the YouTube channel? Since I have so much time right now that I didn't have before, I can invest it in my YouTube channel. And before that, I was just doing like, I don't know, one video per, per month, for two months. I was just trying to come up with some ideas for like playthroughs from LVAT or some, some educational videos about the hurdy gurdy. And now that I have, I, I had more time, I could just come up with something that actually involves um, to some extent creative process because the arrangement of the, the riffs and the, um, the, just the concept, it needs a little bit more time. So I couldn't do it while touring. But I had that idea before. I have one video on YouTube called 10 Iconic Guitar Riffs Played on the Hurdy Gurdy. And it was really popular, I think, around two years ago. And from then on, I wanted to do this, like what I'm doing right now. So take particular bands and just put my favorite riffs together and play it as a medley. Being in a folk metal band, there's a lot of history. Uh, you play you play a medieval instrument and you know the music is often about um events in history mm -hmm. in history so when you look at this time that we're in this bizarre time do you think this is normal because this happens in history like do you think that studying history gives you a different perspective on what's happening right now i think so yeah um, I think um, we can learn a ton from history and a situation like this happened a few times before that there was a disease and um, it was just spreading like crazy and killing millions of people. Yeah, I think it's, well, we can kind of 
try to figure out how it's gonna uh, develop based on the stuff that happened in the past. But still, it's we can yeah we can also have the impression that we don't really have control over uh, our lives and whatever happens it happens and then we have to handle it so yeah i think on one hand we can just take some some knowledge from the past and just try to um even maybe even some comfort that this this stuff just happens and we, we don't have uh, anything to do with that and on the other hand we can just see that yeah people don't really have control over this stuff so yeah do you think that you would write music or write any songs about the plague now? I don't know. <laughs> um, probably not. Maybe in the, in the future, but right now it doesn't really seem that um, that's right, I would say. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the questions I like to ask everyone is your uh, hope for the future or how you imagine the world when this is over. Um, are there personal things that you want to do uh, when this is over? Or are there things that you hope will change in society? Like what's your imagination for the future? Well, one thing I really hope would change is that we will start taking the healthcare system really seriously. So that we can provide for all the people that that are in need in a situation like this. Of course, this is um, this is like really unusual situation. So it's out of um, out of the picture in the normal life, but it can happen as we can see right now. So yeah, maybe some more thoughts about supplying the hospitals and just and generally respecting the, the the doctors and just the healthcare personnel, I would say. <laughs> Have you learned anything about yourself and what is important to you during this different time? Yeah, I think so. I think that um, we, we as musicians, we are in a really, um, special situation, I, I would say, because some of the people are working at home right now, um, like from, this is like, they, they move from the, their office job, their daily job to the um, home office. But for us, it's like, our job demands that we go uh, visit other countries constantly, and we are just on the road all the time with all the other people and we meet some so, so many people and um i think if you are just suddenly stopped in your tracks uh, after leading a life like this this is really something that makes you makes you think because now we have so much time to think <laughs> right and um it's it definitely like change the way I see my family, for example, because th this is something that can affect my family. And I was not um, able to visit them. I was not able to just go over to my parents and, and see them. And it's like, makes you appreciate what you have. So I, I have to say that we are in a pretty fortunate situation. I have absolutely no reason to complain. Uh, we are all fine and my family is, is healthy and we are just, yeah. We just need to stay home and kind of wait this out, if you can, if you can say it like this. So, yeah, um, I think it's a, it's a really great time for self-reflection and also for understanding that maybe some people are more fortunate than others. And if you are more fortunate, then you should reach out and help these who are less fortunate than you in this situation. So yeah. My last question for those of us here in North America who are a few weeks or maybe 
sadly, a few months behind Europe in our mm. reopening. Um, what was the first thing that you did when you could sort of be free and, and go outside? What, what should I put on my list that, that's a good idea? <laughs> um, I would just say go for a walk and just go out and enjoy some fresh air and nature. I think um, for, for a short time, for like two weeks or something like this, I don't remember exactly, but we uh, couldn't go to the forest because the forest were also like out of service. <laughs> they closed the forest. Yeah, they closed the forest, so we cannot go to the forest. And uh, for many people, this was really the, the, the hard part because before we just couldn't go to the, I don't know, there was a line to the store and everything. But then when suddenly it was not possible to go for a walk to the forest, which we could normally do, that was something that was really, um, for some people it was really disturbing. And, and yeah, when they reopened, everybody was like, okay, now we can go for a walk, go to the park go ride a bike so this is really this is a really nice feeling so i would really recommend that it's it's nice to talk to you uh Mihalina. i really did like your uh videos i've subscribed to your channel um, you and I, I i'm guessing there will be more coming yes yeah there will be more videos um i think until the end of the year i have a lot of time to, to make more so there's more coming for sure and I wanted to say thank you for inviting me. It was really nice to chat with you and I, I really enjoyed it. So uh, great project and I, I wish you all the best for the future interviews as well. <laughs> thank you. And hopefully we will see you in North America when it is safe to do so. Yes, hopefully. I feel like the metal community is suffering the most because their whole life is going to shows and festivals exactly. and gigs, like <laughs> that's the whole social life and the community. Mm -hmm. I, I think yes. the metal fans are probably, uh, you know, not in a good place for many. So hopefully the, the, the gigs can come back soon. Yes, let's hope for next year, but I don't know. It's not, not too safe to predict anything, but let's hope for the next year. All right, cheers to that. Thank you. Bye.